Hi guys, it's Reagan and we're gonna go book shopping together. That's right, we've reached the most fun part of the bookish life cycle. About a month or so ago, maybe just a few weeks ago, I did a rather large unhaul, probably my largest uh, of the year so far, I would say. And it's time for me to bring all of those books to the used bookstore, get that amazing credit so that I can funnel that back into buying more books I want to read. So without further ado, let's start collecting and uh, putting all of these books in bags bring them to the store together, and then we can begin our shopping adventure. This is the stack of books we're working with this time around. Honestly, pretty hefty. We're gonna see what this gives. Will I even spend it all? Who knows? Who knows? Actually, wait, I think there's a book in here I've decided I want to keep. So let me, let me find it. Y'all convinced me. I should keep Small Favors by RNA Craig. You all told me I would really like it, and I thought so too. It's just been on my TBR for so long that I was like, maybe I should get rid of it, but I think I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> the bags have been, or the books have been put in bags. Clay is the muscle, per usual. I don't do the heavy lifting around here. And we're off. This is my OOTD. Breezy, comfortable, because it is like 106 degrees outside. Wait, no, that's an exaggeration. It's like 101 degrees outside. But let's venture off and have a book shopping adventure together, shall we? Car music selection of the vlog. We're in our Speak Now era. I can see you. Anyway, time to jam. This is my most favorite manufactured clip. We're here, as I said. Muscle of the operation. <laughs> but we have arrived. You've got this. Anybody need a copy of Arm of the Saints? <laughs> One of my favorite books. Half a King series, which I need to look up if this is part of the first law world. I don't know. really good with my credit clay. I had $85 and I spent $89. Not bad, eh? Hi guys, I am now officially back home and I have a book haul for you. I honestly did fantastic today at the used bookstore. Look at this big old bag of books. Not only did I find quite a few titles I've been kind of on the hunt for. I was particularly lucky with like fantasy sequels that I've been wanting to add to some series I already had on my shelf. But also I was incredibly successful with staying within my credit budget. I had a total credit of $85 to spend and I spent a total of $89 for only four bucks out of my pocket. Now that, 10 out of 10. I'm proud of myself for that one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the books. First book I grabbed is actually the first book to a fantasy series. We had all three books there and I was rather tempted to get all of them, but I decided to hold back, have some self-restraint and only get one. The book is Half a King by Joe Abercrombie. For some reason in the back of my mind, I actually feel like this is a 
YA series by Joe Abercrombie, but please let me know if I'm entirely making that up or not. But in the story, we follow our main character, Yarvi, and he has vowed to regain the throne he has never wanted. First, he must survive cruelty, danger, and the shattered sea. As a young man, he was basically casted out of his kingdom, viewed as a weakling by his father, as he was born with only one good hand, unable to hold an axe or basically be as strong as everyone else in his community. And from there, he sort of surrounds himself with a group of outcasts and others that are considered lost. And he also says that these people have done more to make him the man he is today than any court of nobles ever could. Even with a group of loyal friends surrounding him, the path to his future is still one riddled with danger. I'm really intrigued by this. I believe this is just a trilogy that is now complete. Obviously, I'm a fan of Joe Abercrombie. I've read another trilogy by him, so I'm already pretty familiar with his writing. Um, this is a rather short series, like each book isn't too long, so I feel like it could also be one I can get through rather quickly, but I saw this there, only $7.99. I decided to add it to my shelf. Speaking of a fantastic deal, especially given how long these books are, I also picked up first an Echo of Things to Come and um, the Light of All That Falls by James Isington. And this is actually the second and third book to the Lycanus trilogy. The first one being The Shadow That Was Lost. What's so funny is I bought The Shadow That Was Lost earlier this year and did not put two and two together that this is the same author that wrote The Will of the Many, which I read last month and absolutely loved. So now I have his entire previous trilogy that I've also heard fantastic things about ready and waiting on my bookshelf. Look how chunky these books are. I got one of them for $8.99 and one for $9.99 and these are some beautiful paperbacks and also in like like new condition I'm not even sure if these were read unclear to me. I'm only going to hold up book two given how heavy these books are, but to kind of give some information about what the series is about, because I myself have not read the first one yet. I cannot read the synopsis of book two and three. This actually appears to be another Roman inspired fantasy series that also has a school setting. Two things I personally really enjoy a lot and I've also enjoyed in this author's other works, but this is basically set in a fantasy world where 20 years prior the world has ended, where the dictatorial, I think that's how you say that word, uh, augurs have been overthrown. Individual individuals that were almost like as powerful as gods. They had a lot of powers. They were seemingly invincible, but again, they were overthrown. There are also lesser gifted individuals who served the augurs, men and women who had, again, lesser magical abilities, but they were basically spared as long as they gave themselves over to the rebellion. In this story, we follow our main character, Davian, who has an ability to control the gift, and he's currently in school, like trying to master this ability, but he's treated really poorly within the walls of the school, and it's also very dangerous for him outside of the walls as well, again, given the outcome of this war. When our main character, Davian, actually discovers that he can control control the power of the augurs, which was thought to be lost, his fate and destiny begins to unwind from there. Again, magic school, ancient sort of fantasy setting, a war and conflict, complex political scenarios. Obviously these books are super long, so I feel like a lot is at play here. I already know I enjoy this author's writing, and again, this series is really popular. I'm also a really big fan of these covers and their use of color, so I was so excited when I saw these. These are beautiful. 10 out of 10 purchase. Next up, I picked up two books with fall on my mind. I know it's still technically summertime, but I can't help begin to gear my reading tastes and preferences to the fall season, as it is my favorite time of year to read. Both of these, I feel like, are just gonna be great fall pickups. The first is The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield, an author I have read other books from and have really enjoyed. She has a really beautiful writing style that's lush and heavy with a metaphor, very like fairy tale, ancient tale, Esque, and this particular book by hers is super, super popular. I've actually been aware of this book for a very long time, but the other day I was literally just Googling books for fans of Jane Eyre because I was having just desires to encounter a very dramatic Gothic story like Jane Eyre that would give me those feels. And this book came up and I said to myself, well, I guess I need to buy it. Reading over the synopsis, I can completely understand why this book is recommended to fans of Jane Eyre because it does appear to be like a spoothic Gothic leading story we follow first one of our main characters, Vita, who is a very famous and reclusive author. For the past six decades, she has written 12 very, very famous stories. All of them are kind of outlandish, 
fake histories of her life that have garnered her both fame and fortune. Also, she uses them as an attempt to kind of cover up her true secret and painful past. But now, kind of in the midnight of her life, let's say, she has decided to commission the final 13th tale, have it finally be brought to life. So she brings in another writer, a biographer, and she begins to like share her life story with her. And I believe there's kind of like parallels in life experience between these two writers. I love one, the concept and setup of this, almost like a final confessional, a releasing of the burden of a secret you've been holding onto your entire life. I feel like this book is going to be really mesmerizing and dark and spooky. I'm very curious about it. I also love that it centers writing. So yes, I grabbed this, a hardcover for only $9.99. And then the next book I picked up was Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments by T.L. Huchu. This is the second book, the first one being The Library of the Dead, which I read last fall and was really, really endeared by it. I can't wait to read more. I loved the main character, Ropa, so much. But this book is set in Edinburgh. It's set in our world, but more of an alternate version of it. In this world, it's like modern day, but ghosts and kind of paranormal powers are now the rule of the land. And also there's a little more desperation in terms of survival in this world too. As I mentioned in the story, we follow our main character, Ropa, and she is a ghost talker. She is a young woman who is very tenacious, very, very focused, smart, and not really one to listen to any type of authority figure, but she also spends her days trying to make money to help support herself and her family. And she does this again by taking on small jobs via ghost talking. In book one, we follow her as she takes on a much larger mystery that's taking over the city of Edinburgh as young children are basically being stolen and then returned as empty husks. This is an entirely new mystery following our main character Ropa as she's again venturing out into the dark streets of Edinburgh. It definitely gives like mystery of the week vibes and honestly I could spend eternity following stories of this main character because I am just so unbelievably delighted by her. She's a great fictional heroine to root the story. This series is spooky and interesting. I love its use of magic. I think the Edinburgh setting is amazing. I wouldn't say it's mind-boggling but it's so charming so I was thrilled to find the sequel of this book at such a great price and in hardcover. I'm also obsessed with these covers. These are just such perfect fall reads. The next book I was able to grab was another well-priced sequel that I've been meaning to add to my shelf. And that is The Last Mortal Bond by Brian Stavely. This is book three to the unhewn throne. I own book one. I do not own book two because I didn't have that at the used bookstore. But when I saw again, the third book to a series, I have a really strong feeling I'm going to like for $8.99. I decided to grab it because this book is typically 18 bucks. So a great deal. But the first book is called The Emperor's Blade, and I've not only heard fantastic things about it, but the setup and synopsis also really appears to be something I would enjoy. The tagline of the book is, the circle is closing, the stakes are high, and old truths will live again. It's set in a fantasy world where right at the beginning of this tale, the emperor has been killed, and we are quickly then moved to the primary perspectives of the story, which are all his children, um, kind of having to battle and confront like different things after power has been completely upended. First is his son, who is a very powerful soldier, but he is an ocean away at the beginning of book one. And while he knows he needs to get back to the capital city, he quickly realizes that he's under threat and he still has a very dangerous like initiation that he has to complete. We also follow the emperor's daughter who is back in the capital city and is trying to chase the murderer and like solve that crime there. And then lastly, the heir to the throne who is in a remote monastery training and like learning magic. And it says when the imperial delegation delegation arrives to pick the air up. Has he learned enough of this ancient magic to be able to pierce through like evil intent or a helpful hand? Doesn't that just sound so intriguing? I love a dramatic fight for the throne. I love political leading stories and not knowing who to trust in those scenarios. I also am hoping that all of these siblings are very much connected and possibly like each other or work together in some sort of capacity, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be following multiple perspectives, which I am really enjoying too. I've heard great things about this. So I have book one and book three officially on my shelves. Then the last book I picked up is actually a newer release. I bought this new, but I think it was like a slight discount off, but it's also an incredibly hard pivot from the rest of the books I've showed off today, but it was actually recommended to me from one of my IRL friends. Once I looked into it, it also just seems so unbelievably charming. And that is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelly. This book is about an unusual and unexpected friendship that forms between a woman 
and an octopus. But in this story, we follow first our main character Tova, who has recently begun working the night shift in her city's aquarium to keep busy. Her husband has just recently passed away, and after the disappearance of her son 30 years prior in the Puget Sound, this has been her main coping mechanism to kind of like stay away from her grief. There, Tova becomes acquainted with the very grumpy uh, Marcellus, who has no desires to lift one of his eight legs to help any of his human captors, but they begin to form this unlikely bond and friendship and begin to confide in one another. And from there, Marcellus decides to kind of look into and begin to investigate the disappearance of Tova's son. This is said to be witting and charming and remarkable, and also apparently a gentle reminder that taking a hard look at the past can help us move forward in the future. I feel like this is going to make me cry. I also love the unique setup and premise of this. It's just really unexpected, but I feel like the story is going to be so touching. You know what I mean? Alrighty guys, those are these seven books I picked up at the used bookstore. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my little used book shopping blog. We got rid of some books. We bought some new books. Hopefully I love these ones more than the ones that I got rid of, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!